entire knot, well, the final version of it without the grid, obviously. And it will save it into SVG vector format so you can uh, open it in Illustrator or wherever else you like it. And you can finalize it or edit it in any way. And uh, so that's another feature. And uh, one of the cool things about the application, too, that it doesn't actually use a number of pre-made tiles to construct this knot. As you can see, there's a lot of repetition of little tiles here. But I actually generate those on the fly using the Java 2D graphics. And the good thing about that is that I can use the Apache Batic toolkit to generate an SVG file. And uh, another good thing about using the Java native graphics to generate the knot itself is that I can change a lot of parameters here, as you can see in the options. I can change the stroke color. I can change uh, the knot color itself. I can change the background here and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back to black here to make it look better. And another thing I can change, I can change the cell size. I can make this not bigger. Here it's already bigger. And then I can change the stroke. Uh, something's going on here, but uh, yeah, I can change the stroke. I can also change the size of the actual strings. So you can see here I'm changing the size. And obviously, this would not be possible if I was using just pre-made images. So that's another customization to the algorithm that I did to also allow you to better design your own knot that you want to make. And um, finally, let's go into some other extra features that I've done is that, oh, let's open this tools menu, is that one of the first things I did is to, I was adding and deleting break markers. And uh, while that's all cool, sometimes I cannot create a really full representation of what I really want using just adding and removing break markers, since I can not really remove parts of the knot. So let's say I put four break markers here, and then end up with this little circle here. And let's say I don't really want it. Let's say I want to create a knot that doesn't have anything in this spot. So what I did, I added this new tool here on the left, which would not only just which would enable you to remove the entire cell. So here I can just go, instead of highlighting break markers, and now highlights valid cells that I can remove. And a cell I define as a 4 by 4 neighborhood of smaller cells. And I can only remove big cells since just the nature of the knot. Since if I only remove one, it will actually break the knot. So I have to remove cells in a neighborhood of 4. So here I can remove cells right now. Boom, boom. and uh, now it actually makes more sense uh, in terms of artistic designs. I can remove parts of the knot that are not very interesting to me. And um, here to show you an example, let's start. Let's make a new grid here. And then one of the cool things about it is that I can remove parts of the knot. Oops. Uh, let's make it smaller here and. Uh, one of the cool things about it is that I can uh, actually make, let's say I want to make a letter C that's made out of Celtic knotwork. So let's say I kill all this, these cells, and now I can do something like this, which actually looks like a letter C done as a Celtic knot. And similarly, you can do other things like letter A. So once again, uh, this becomes... Uh, more usable for an artist if he wants to do something specific instead of just limiting to a square grid. And um, yeah, so that's one of the other features. And um, let's see here. Um, once again, as I mentioned, you can uh, save the files in SVG and load them up. So we can uh, see of some examples that I've done. So. Uh, here, oh, one of the main things is, as I mentioned, there's a different tiles in the, in the application. So if you look here, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of common little pieces here. So you see the a small cell here defines a little piece that is used in a knot. And in fact, I only use five different pieces here, as you can see. Uh, there's a corner. There's a corner here. There's a straight, there's a line, the line here, I don't have a line, but we can put one in. So let's say I do something like this. So this is actually a straight, straight line piece. 
There's a straight cross, which is shown right here. There's also a curved cross over, which is, let's see, is something right here. See, it's a curved line, but it crosses over uh, another string below it. And there's a curved cross under, which is shown right here. So it's a, uh, so it's a, uh, wait, actually it's, yeah, one of the examples here is an, it curves but then it goes under another string so those are the only five pieces really used throughout the entire knot and by just rotating them and flipping them you can generate more pieces and to actually shape the knot but just because there are only five pieces that would makes it easier for me to just generate them on a fly quickly and display it and uh, another thing is that in my application I actually just made a simple interface in Java that allows you if you want to extend the program to define your own uh, shape class like a not shape class which would put more line uh, which would uh, so I define in Java a new class that would help you to define your own shape so if you want to let's say make some kind of a corner with a with a different style, let's say without a border or etc., you can easily do that and extend the program. And um, going back to some of my results, um, here they are. So let's say here I uh, made a Celtic knot out of uh, CS791, which is the grad course that I implemented uh, this assignment. Like this is the grad course the assignment is part of. And uh, let's see some other ones. There's some uh, Celtic knot symmetry groups which are also part of an assignment and um, in general there's a lot of cool things you can do with this and um, I will likely put this up as a part of Google code so you can actually try to download this program and uh, see play around with it try to generate some knots yourself and I hope you like it alright thank you very much